it becomes very difficult to tell whether two different animals or plants belong actually to different species because they vary a little bit but not enough to be quite certain. These uh, species are often called ring species and they become a matter of considerable interest for evolutionists. If you go over a larger territory the question becomes far more complicated because the species vary. If you travel far enough around the world it sometimes becomes difficult to tell where one species ends and another begins. You can see the problem with the herring gull which circles the globe uh, in the northern latitudes. Everyone recognizes the American common herring gull uh, <coughs> which uh, is found around most uh, sea and lake areas in the northern United States. If you start for instance in uh, New England or eastern Canada and move westward you find that the gulls differ the farther west you go. The wings become blacker, the legs become pinkish, and the eye color changes a little bit. Uh, thus we have different names and by the time you get to far eastern Siberia it's known as the Vega herring gull. The further you, if you keep continuing westward you find that they become darker and darker until uh, finally you get to uh, um, in Norway and you find a blackback gull which looks very different from the herring gull uh, in of the eastern United States. If you go westward you never find a situation in which one gull does not breed with its nearest neighbor to the east or west. Thus the Vega herring gull breeds easily with the American herring gull and with Barula's gull and so forth and so on. However, if you go eastward from the east coast of the United States towards Europe you find that the black back gull and the herring gull meet and these two do not interbreed. Thus by that criterion the herring gull and the black backed gull are different species. But if you go on a westerly direction you never find a point at which the her American herring gull gives way to the black backed gull. Thus are they one species or are they two? The same is true for the American leopard frog. If you catch a leopard frog in Quebec or New York or New England it looks like the one on the left. If you catch one in Louisiana it looks noticeably different as you can see on the right. Uh, their sounds are very different too as you will as will be demonstrated now. This is what a northern leopard frog sounds like. And this is a southern leopard frog. A Quebec frog will not interbreed with a Louisiana frog, but if you take them, say, from Quebec to Vermont to New Hampshire to New York to Pennsylvania and so forth you never find a point at which one frog will not interbreed with another. So are they one species or are they two? This was a big question to, for the evolutionists. This and other adventures can be found in The Joy of Science by Richard A. Lockshan published by Springer.